What is up guys? Welcome to yet another video. Sometimes you wind up in a situation where you captured way too much noise or grain in your video. We've all been there and it is annoying, but don't worry, you don't have to throw away your footage. There is a really, really decent hack to get rid of that. And if you stick around until the end, I'll also show you my backup plan in case everything fails. Now, the function comes for free in apps like Premiere Pro. However, the trade-off with free denoising technology typically is, if you push it too far, you'll lose a lot of sharpness and detail in your image, and it eventually becomes a little bit like an oil painting. So it's basically a balancing act, which tends to get a little bit better if you're using third-party software or paid plugins. But today I'll show you a hack that allows you to maintain the sharpness in your image without spending any money and an alternative way using the most sophisticated noise reduction tools out there that is also completely free of charge. So first of all, what is noise and how does it happen? For those of you who already know the theory, no problem, I'll leave a timestamp below so you can skip forward. Now every image that is recorded on a camera contains a little bit of noise when you zoom in and it is within normal boundaries and that is totally fine. However, if you set the ISO on your camera sensor, aka the sensitivity to light too high, then the image might become a little bit grainy and eventually polluted with noise. This typically happens in low light environments when you don't have that much light to capture. Lastly, there are two types of noise. One is called luma, the other one is called chroma. Now, luma noise is represented by those grainy black and white spots in an image. Chroma noise, however, looks more like these RGB, like kind of colorful dots and pixels. And generally speaking, chroma noise is considered more distracting and annoying. Okay, now with the theory out of the way, let's have a look at some footage that I shot of my friend. It was a little bit of a dark environment and I felt I pushed the ISO on my camera a little too much, so the noise is quite evident, particularly in the shadows. Okay, so first things first, I'll show you how to do it in Premiere Pro. First, I drag and drop my sample video with the noise and duplicate that particular layer. Then I turn off the visibility of the top layer, but don't worry about that one too much in the first step. Next, I go to the effects panel and I search for the term VR denoise and I apply that to the bottom layer. So the default setting of that function is way too extreme. Basically what it does, it will screen 20 pixels around each noisy element and then average out those 20 pixels around it. We want to decrease that quite significantly and I tend to move that all the way down to two to four pixels. Okay, let's have a look. And that looks so much better and a lot more subtle. However, one problem that we created now is that the bright parts in the image became a little bit softer and less sharp. But don't worry, there is a hack to get kind of best of both worlds. On the top layer, I'll add an effect which is called a Luma key. And basically what it does is key out bright or dark parts. So if the threshold, for example, is set to 50%, then everything darker than 50% will become transparent. The problem happens in the shadows. So all we have to do is key out the shadows and then it will show through the bottom layer with the denoising applied, but we still maintain the original image in the top layer. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so instead of having to guess the threshold, we want to apply a temporary tint as a visual helper to the bottom clip and give it a very bright color, like red or yellow, so I can see better. So let's type in tint in the effects panel and drag and drop that effect. Now I can select the bottom clip and move the threshold slider until I find a setting where only the shadows are affected. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now we got the best of both worlds, basically. We reduce the annoying noise in the shadows and the bright parts maintain the original sharpness. Now, afterwards, I can delete the tint and boom. Awesome. If you found this valuable so far, 
please help me and hit the like button so this doesn't get completely lost in the YouTube algorithm, all right? Now keep in mind, there are limitations of what the software can handle. So if you captured way too much noise, then you might not be able to say things anymore. And that is why I prepared a plan B in form of some bonus tips. These bonus tips are presented to you by my friends over at Motionary, their one-stop shop for everything related to video editing. Motionary is a brand that I personally use quite often and the place where I like to source a lot of my video editing assets for the stuff I upload on my channel. Stuff like animated text or overlays and these things that you see a lot on this channel. A subscription to Motionary will cost you less than $20 per month, which is quite reasonable. Now, if you want to sign up for the annual plan, the link below the video will knock off an additional 50 US dollars, which I find extremely fair considering that a single preset pack or something like that will often cost you way more than 20 US dollars. But without further ado, here are the bonus tips. Tip number one is making things a bit blurry around the edges of the video. A tiny bit of blur helps to hide away the noise. So all you gotta do is create an adjustment layer and then search for the term Gaussian blur. So you don't wanna go too crazy with this but a value of 10 or so usually does the trick for me. So all I gotta do now is draw a mask around the center of the image and then apply a pretty large feather so it gets smoothed out quite a lot. So in this case, let's choose a value of like, let's say like 50 or even larger and that way the image looks a bit softer around the edges but is still sharp in the middle. Tip number two is making the canvas a little bit smaller because that way the pixels become smaller and the noise will be much harder to recognize. Now you might ask yourself like, yeah, but what do you do with the area around the main video? Pretty simple, overlay a cool graphic. And all I have to do is go to a service like Motionary and type in a keyword like grunge. That gives me a variety of really cool looking video loops that I can use as a canvas around my main video. Another cool term is crumpled paper, which is also a very cool looking texture that can solve as a background, but you can be so creative and there are basically no limits with this approach. Tip number three is embracing imperfection and noisiness and graininess of your footage. Nowadays, a lot of people want to recreate the film look so you can overlay a few vintage elements to make it look intentional and kind of overshadow the fact that it contains grain. So once again, I go find an asset on the internet and I search for the term Super 8 overlay and download that and bam, throw that on top of your footage. You can also look for stuff like VCR or just throw on general scratches or something like this. And here's another option and that is using another super professional piece of software which is called DaVinci Resolve and the paid studio version has some of the most sophisticated noise reduction technology out there. Okay, so first import your footage into DaVinci Resolve and place it on the timeline make sure it is selected so we can start applying the noise reduction and sharpening effects. Now, generally speaking, you want to apply the noise reduction before you make any changes to the color grading and so on. Now head over to the color tab and select the noise reduction palette. We'll start with temporal noise reduction, which works by comparing frames over time to reduce noise. So if you set the number of frames to a very low value, that is typically quite suitable for an image with a lot of movement. So for example, if we choose the number three, then it will analyze three frames before and after. If you set it to a high value, that is typically suited for shots without too much movement. Next, you can change the motion estimation type from faster to better, and that will basically work a little bit harder on your computer but create more accurate results. Next, you can play around with the temporal threshold, which contains slider for luma or chroma noise. Depending on the noise level that is present in your video, you wanna play around with these. So basically, luma noise is represented by grainy white and black spots in an image. Chroma noise, however, looks more like these RGB colorful dots and pixels. But as I said, you need to play around with the sliders to find the sweet spot for your specific clip 
but I found that a value of 20 to 25 works for a lot of cases for me. Next, I'll tackle spatial noise reduction and this targets noise within an individual frame. It analyzes a radius around each noisy element and then averages the pixels around it. Now, it makes sense to unlock the sliders so you can tackle both types of noise separately. Now, generally speaking, chroma noise is considered a lot more distracting than luma noise. So one of the tricks that I like to do is applying more chroma noise reduction. So I move both sliders to a value of zero and then I gradually increase the chroma slider to get rid of RGB noise. Okay, so let's check out the result. Looks way, way better, right? Okay, and here is the last step. Now that we've reduced the noise, it is time to sharpen the footage to bring back some of the lost detail. So simply head over to the blur palette and decrease the blur slider to around 0.45 to 0.5. Now, if you reduce blur, that means you basically sharpen the image, but be careful not to overdo it. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this made your footage better. Feel free to share with a friend who might find this useful. And with that said, I'll catch you guys one of the next ones.